The future USS Enterprise, CVN-80, will be a nuclear-powered supercarrier built to project American air power across the globe. Designed to operate with nearly 100 aircraft and powered by reactors capable of energizing a small city, she is expected to become the most capable aircraft carrier ever constructed once she enters service. The U.S. Navy began constructing CVN-80 to continue the proud and historic legacy of ships bearing the name Enterprise. As a member of the Gerald R. Ford class, she represents the newest and most advanced generation of American supercarriers, purpose-built to replace aging platforms and confront rapidly evolving threats in the 21st century. Construction officially began in 2017 with the ceremonial first cut of steel, followed by the keel laying on August 27, 2022. As of late 2025, she remains under active construction at Newport News Shipbuilding, with delivery planned for July of 2030, according to the latest Navy budget projections. CVN 80's story is closely tied to the retirement of her predecessor, USS Enterprise CVN-65 in 2012. Known throughout the fleet as the Big E, that ship served for more than half a century before her decommissioning. Soon after, the Navy announced that the next Ford-class carrier would inherit the Enterprise name, a decision formally confirmed on December 1, 2012. Procurement funding was approved for fiscal year 2018 and designers turned to a fully digital development process, making CVN-80 the first U.S. aircraft carrier built primarily with digital tools rather than traditional paper blueprints. Olympic champions Katie Ledecky and Simone Biles serve as the ship's sponsors, and their initials are permanently welded into a steel plate within the carrier's hull. To honor the legacy of CVN-65, 35,000 pounds of steel from the retired ship were melted down and incorporated into the new enterprise, symbolically linking past and future. In terms of raw specifications, CVN-80 will displace about 100,000 long tons at full load. She stretches 337 meters from bow to stern with a 41 meter beam at the waterline and a massive 333 by 78 meter flight deck above. Drawing roughly 12 meters of water, she will be propelled by two advanced A-1B nuclear reactors driving four shafts, giving her a top speed above 30 knots and virtually unlimited operational range. Her total complement, including ship's crew, air wing personnel, and staff, is expected to reach approximately 4,660. The air wing will typically deploy with more than 75 aircraft, and the ship can support up to 90 depending on mission requirements. But the Enterprise's defining features are not just her size, they're her systems. The Ford class introduces technologies that fundamentally change naval aviation. At the center of that evolution is the Electromagnetic Aircraft Launch System, or emails, which replaces steam catapults. Emails provide smoother and more controlled launches, reduces stress on airframes, supports lighter aircraft including unmanned platforms, and enables significantly higher sortie generation. The carrier also incorporates an optimized flight deck layout, advanced weapons elevators, and automated handling systems that accelerate aircraft movement, rearming, and turnaround times. And because CVN-80 was designed digitally from the outset, she includes expanded growth margins, allowing future integration of new radars, sensors, unmanned aircraft, and even directed energy weapons. With far greater electrical output than previous U.S. carriers, she is engineered not only for current technology, but for systems that have yet to be fielded. Her defensive capabilities revolve around layered protection, including surface-to-air missiles, rolling airframe missiles, and close-in weapon systems to defeat incoming threats. Offensively, her power comes through the embarked air wing, likely featuring F-35C Lightning II, electronic warfare aircraft, early warning platforms, helicopters, and next-generation unmanned systems. Her full combat strength is realized through integration with her carrier strike group, destroyers, cruisers, submarines, and logistics ships that form a unified combat force. When compared with other major carriers worldwide, CVN-80's advantages are substantial. China's Type 003, for example, is estimated to displace between 80,000 and 85,000 tons. 
considerably less than CVN-80's 100,000-ton full load. That difference translates directly into more fuel, more munitions, greater endurance, and a larger air wing. And while Type 003 relies on conventional propulsion, CVN-80's nuclear reactors provide effectively unlimited range, a critical advantage in long, sustained operations far from home ports. The Ford-class launch and handling systems also support higher sortie rates than conventionally powered carriers can achieve. The United Kingdom's Queen Elizabeth-class carriers, while modern and highly capable, displace between 65,000 and 70,000 tons, well below CVN-80's size. Built around STOVL aircraft, such as the F-35B, they excel at flexible expeditionary operations but cannot match the endurance, sortie capacity, or heavy fixed-wing strike capability of a nuclear supercarrier. Even France's nuclear-powered Charles de Gaulle highlights the advantage. At roughly 42,000 to 45,000 tons, she is less than half the displacement of CVN-80. Her smaller size limits air wing capacity, fuel and ordnance stores, and sustained sortie generation. Charles de Gaulle's design reflects late 20th century naval aviation, while CVN-80 incorporates nearly two additional decades of lessons learned, modern digital design tools, and the latest operational requirements. Operationally, CVN-80 is built for high-tempo environments. In a regional crisis, an island chain, a contested sea lane, or any high-stakes maritime flashpoint, the Enterprise can rapidly launch waves of F-35C, airborne early warning aircraft, electronic warfare platforms, and helicopters. Emails accelerates launch cycles, and advanced deck systems shrink refueling and rearming times. Supported by her escort ships, she can maintain persistent air operations for weeks at a time. Nuclear propulsion removes traditional range limits, allowing continuous deployments as long as aviation fuel and munitions are sustained. But despite her strengths, CVN-80 is not without challenges. Cost remains a major concern. A Ford-class carrier requires roughly $14 to $15 billion to build, excluding lifetime operations and maintenance. And without escort ships, a carrier remains vulnerable to long-range missiles, submarines, and cyber threats. While her nuclear reactors provide unmatched endurance, her aircraft still rely on aviation fuel and munitions, creating a constant demand for logistics support. The upcoming USS Enterprise is far more than another supercarrier. She represents the next leap in naval aviation, maritime strategy, and global power projection. With immense displacement, nuclear propulsion, advanced launch systems, and a formidable air wing, CVN-80 is poised to redefine how carrier warfare is conducted. But her ultimate influence will depend on the strategy that guides her, the sailors who serve aboard her, and the fleet that sails alongside her. In the decades ahead, CVN-80 may well become one of the defining symbols of American sea power.